I'm Andrew Sherman. I'm a Texas transplant who has always been in pursuit of art as a career. I've played in bands, pursued an acting career in Hollywood, but I found it behind the lens of a camera here in Dallas, Texas. I was born in New York, I've lived in Chicago, Los Angeles, Austin, but I love Dallas. There's a magical artistic scene in Dallas that mostly goes unnoticed to the outside world. This podcast is focused on what makes it so special and the people who make it thrive artistically. If you don't live here, and even if you do, you might not have heard of them. This is the Dallas Famous Podcast. Preston Panic is a visual artist from Dallas, Texas. His murals and trademark style can be seen all over Deep Ellum, Dallas, and beyond. He and his wife, Adrian, form a true Dallas power couple, putting out creative and inspiring artwork from the House of Panic. Preston was recently added to the roster of Art Group, a prestigious art agency that has already led to his new contract with Modelo. We get to know his history from using house paints all the way up to his current success. So sit back and get to know Preston Panic. Okay, so let's start with, like, did you start out in Dallas? Where'd you start out? I did start out in Dallas. Um, I come from a, a Dallas family. Both my mom and dad were raised here. Um, uh, went to Lake Highlands High School on the other side of the lake here. Oh, cool. Grew up there um, and uh, haven't really left Dallas all that much. Left to go live in Denton for a year. To, that didn't work out so well. And um, pretty much DFW is, is, is all of my life. I mean, right. I go on vacation. I've left Dallas. You know right, what I mean? right. But, but at you've the only same, pretty much lived but here. But I've lived here. This is my yeah. home. I mean, I, like I said in the, our last podcast, uh, when I moved here, it's just amazing to me. It says a lot about a city where most people are from here. You it's know. the biggest small town you'll ever see. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Okay, well, so then you, so you're starting in Dallas. Like, uh, let's. How does art start in your life? Um, it started off as a kid for sure. Like, uh, I was always creative and doodling around. Um, didn't really or wasn't really able to focus much on school. I have all the learning disabilities, <laughs> all of them. It's a good time, and uh, <laughs> so I would just doodle and draw and get in trouble in school because I didn't know how to do anything else. Um, did a lot of school art competitions because it was the only thing that I was good at. I got F's across the board, school art competition, first place. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. So that was, that's where I guess I, I first kind of got into it. And then my dad side and my mom's side are really big into um, art and my dad's especially collecting and my grandmother, especially as a uh, admirer of art, she would take us to museums and teach us stuff as, uh, as a kid and teach us about the greats and the originals that, you know, built the backbone of what artists like I try to, you know, recreate in a way. Mm. And um, that's uh, from there, you know, as I grew up, I kind of discovered that that's really what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a musician too. I think we all do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sometime anybody that grew up with MTV definitely yeah, I mean I, I have all the instruments still in recording right here in the room behind me right. um I dabble on them from here to there from here you know now and then but uh at, at the at some point in my life I just realized like we can sit here and keep trying to do this thing that we're okay at or we can go do this mm -hmm. which I still have a lot of fun at but I'm, I'm a, I just my my talents are more based towards the physical art sure. than it is towards the musical. Well, so yeah, let's. I mean, I want to break that down a little bit. So like art is pretty broad. Like mm -hmm. so, like when you were first doing stuff that wasn't just a doodle. Like what was your medium? Uh, when I first like broke away from the writing on the back of the school books and on my backpack and stuff. Uh, <laughs> I guess the let me let me see. I guess my first medium was probably like house paints because those were easy to find. We had them in the garage um, growing up. And then, uh, I mean, they, it seems like house paints were always just something you could find, you know, half, half open ones. People had done a project or whatever. People also throw them away a lot. You could also get them for really cheap at Home Depot, ones that have been opened before. Huh. So that's, that's where I started because, you know, money-wise, art's expensive. <laughs> yeah, no, I never, that's brilliant. I didn't think about that. That's... That house paints is definitely uh, where I started at. Um, and then from there, I kind of moved into specifically using like latex house paints um, for their uh, their scientific purposes. For the reason like how they're built, they they react differently to like components I were adding. I was adding to them like water and um, uh, spray paint, and that's where I started using the spray paints when I was painting with the latex and the water. And I was finding out new ways of making uh, 
you know, patterns and stuff within hmm. those with by using those combinations of paints and, and materials. And that's that's where it really started, where my art really started to like open up is when I started to mix things together mm-hmm. and get off of just using the paintbrush. Yeah, and so a big thing for a lot of people, because a lot of people it's just like music, they're doing art at their house or they think they're good or like what was the maybe the first point where you're like, This is something I'm gonna make money doing. Man, to make money doing was was probably much later. For a while, I did it and I did it obsessed like obsessive compulsively. Like I, I paint a lot of these paintings that are here, this one behind you, that big one, mm. the big one over here that looks like graffiti on the wall back over than this wall. Those were all painted in my um God, I'd say mid to late twenties. And I wasn't really doing them for anything other than um just uh, wanting to create and it calmed me down. It calmed my ADD down, my ADHD down. It calmed my anxiety down. When I was painting, I was like, didn't have to deal with anything else. Mm. I could just zone in and I hyper fixate on stuff. So I would hyper fixate for months and make like, and completely disappear from the world <laughs> and <laughs> all the problems and stuff that come with it too, which is a, an issue. <laughs> and then just paint. But I ended up with some really cool pieces and, and, enough to where I still have them in my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like a couple of them I saved from gorgeous. that period of my life. Yeah. Um, but when it turned into a money thing is when people saw them. So I come out of that little period of my life where I was like really just banging out huge pieces, nowhere to hang them to. I was just stacking them in this place that I lived and just <laughs> going at another one, going at another one. Um, and uh, I had some friends come in and uh, one of them, uh, Khalid Beard, a good buddy of mine, uh, he knew some art people, and he was like, man, let me, let me do an art show for you at the, this place called The Sugar Shack. And uh, it was a bar on Lower Greenville. And um, I was like, okay. Like, I hadn't really, really thought about it, to be honest with you. It was more like I was just having fun. Huh. I thought I was doing good, but who knows? You know what I mean? Um, and then we do that show, and everything started people were coming in and people were getting really excited. There was a lot of people there. Everybody's telling me how great the art was. And I was like, Oh crap, maybe, maybe I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah. I get it though. When you're like locked up and you have no perspective, what you're doing is going to hit other people. No. Yeah, yeah. You just have what's in your head and I can sit there and replay me thinking what's going to happen. I mean, every artist does every mm-hmm. artist, every painting you make. That's the one. That's the one. You're going to put it out there and everybody's going to love it. You're going to be famous. Oh, the yeah. whole world's going to follow you because of this amazing thing you made. And then you put it out there and you're like, well, maybe next time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know that one. I know too well with the photos. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, so you're doing, you know, you've switched onto this thing, but then that's way before like murals and spray painting came way in, right? Way before. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, what am I missing before we get to that? Okay. So then I... Uh, just specifically, you know, like, per, like, what's it called? Like, uh, pertaining to art. Um, from that point, I kind of like started experimenting more, and then I moved to a loft on what is it? It's in the Cedars. I can't remember. I think it was on Irve. Yeah, on Irve, next to the theater, and by the Cedars. And I had my first loft. Okay, an actual artist workspace. I had just got out of a relationship, so I was single in this loft. With all the canvas in the world, my dad came and bought me this roll of canvas. Like, it was just, like, like you know what I'm talking about? Like, tire size <laughs> right. roll of canvas. And he drops it off my house, a whole bunch of wood and a Home Depot card. Figure it out. <laughs> well, I'm like, all right, pops. Yeah. So I get to building, and he showed me how to make some frames. You know, these, these were all, I built all these frames. Um, and he showed me kind of how to make them and stretch the canvas a little bit. Not professionally, but well enough to where I could paint on them, right? Mm. And he's like, try it. See what you can do, kid. You know, you love it. You've been doing it forever. And uh, so, you know, I get a little emotional. Sorry. And uh, I start I start painting in that loft and I start using different materials then. Because at this point, you know, I have this Home Depot card my dad hooked me up with. And um, I didn't have a lot of money. It was a couple hundred bucks. But um, I started buying different stuff like, like the texture mud. And then I was also my... I was using stuff from outside. I was finding rocks outside, pebbles, and I'd bring them in and mix them with the texture mud and then put water and latex on it and start pulling that and then come back with spray paint and hit different sides to get angles of light onto it. Hmm. And I was starting to create something I hadn't seen before, and it was getting cool. I thought it was getting pretty pretty cool. Um, for the next couple of years, though, really all I did was, was practice again because I didn't have any connections to show anybody. So mm-hmm. at this point, I'm just painting and collecting a lot. And I have a space to do it in. The It's like a 1,000-square-foot shotgun loft, but it had 
like 20 foot ceilings and it was one wall each side. So you could hang paintings for days. Huh. You know what I mean? Both cool. just two huge walls all the way down the place. So I was just literally painting stack, painting stack, painting stack. You know what I mean? Yeah. And obsessive compulsive behavior for a couple of years there. Um, then uh, I moved to Kessler Park for a year with a girl and stopped painting for a little bit. Bad relationships can make artists get out of their head. I'll tell you that, man. Mm. Um, then... I come to Deep Ellum, and that's where everything, my whole life changes, mm, right? Right. Um, that's where I turn into like this guy that was painting to uh, to who I am now as a as a professional artist, and uh, that happened from, I, you know, I get I get another loft. I was like, man, I loved that loft. I had so much great, like that was my space. I knew it. That's where I needed to be. Was in a big open area where I could create and didn't have to have like, it was too organized in the house. Kessler Park was too organized, especially for the age I was at the time. And it just, it wasn't a good fit. Hmm. The whole thing just didn't work. I couldn't create there. The room I had was more like a bedroom that I was creating in and I do big pieces and it was uncomfortable. And the whole thing was just, it wasn't working. Um, but then I get to Deep Ellum, I start making some new friends and I bump into Jared Fresquez and that's like whole life changes, hmm. you know? He's huge in the art scene. He's huge in the fashion scene. He's huge. Just he is the scene. He's throwing parties. He's in the uh, all, articles for everything for this PR business. He's doing big stuff. And him and I were buddies, buddies in our like late teens, early twenties. Him and I would throw parties. You know, big, big, big oh, parties. Right. He would DJ, and I knew everybody. And I just you know, we we would come together and throw these monster, monster, super illegal. Parties. <laughs> Can't tell you how many times the cops came and busted us. They got to one point where they'd, uh, it, they'd gotten so big and they were so annoyed by us. And they, we, we weren't going to open the door to these places we were throwing it at. And they can't just come in. It doesn't work like that. Right. Um, so they got to the point, they'd just pull by and they'd be like, Fresquez, panic, shut it down. Shut it down. We're not even coming over there. Shut it down. Or I swear we're going to start making problems. That's where it got to. Like, they wouldn't even get out of their car. They just did it on their little microphone. And we're and Jared and I look at each other like, mm, maybe we should chill out. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so our friendship kind of like, and then he went back to college, and I did not. <laughs> I did not go to school. Um, so we had our life separate for 10 years. But when we came back, it was like, brothers, you mm. know? And uh, we hit it back off, and he sees my art. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. um, and he flips out. And I was like, okay. Well, he's not the kind of guy to BS me. He's not going to, if Jared didn't like my stuff, he'd be like, well, you know, maybe you should do this or that. He's definitely not going to put his name on the line mm -hmm. with everything he had going sure. to promote this buddy that he used to know 10 years ago from parties, you know? And he's like, you need to start coming out with me. We need to, you, first things first, we got, you got to make a name for yourself. Nobody even knows who you are. You're just this guy in a loft. And that's a big thing for artists. Nobody will ever find you if you stay inside your place making art. Mm -hmm. You got to take it out there and show people. Um, anyway, so he starts taking me out. We start going to events. We start going to parties. I'm meeting the right connections. I'm talking to the right people. I'm meeting gallery owners, uh, press stuff like that. Things you need a team to get your stuff out there. And also during that time, I, I make new friends, my buddy, Tommy Hawkins, my buddy, Clint Brown. Um, and these guys help me, you know, change my life as a person. Cause before I wasn't in the best shape. You know, as a as a human being, I was a I was addicted to pretty much everything, and I was homeless and uh, in trouble with the law a lot. And until I met those guys, uh, I I probably would have kept on going down that that path. But those guys were like, "Hey, dude, you got this great talent, bro. Why don't we just quit all this stuff and mm -hmm. let's just focus on this, bro? Because this is something. And if I could do this, I would be doing that, not being a fuck up. So maybe." maybe take advantage uh, of what you got going on here. Yeah. And that little talk with those guys, it was like, well, it's time to take this seriously. And then it was, let's do art. Nice. Then it was yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. That's great that you had friends like that, that really just believed in your talent. Cause you know, when you're an artist, a lot of people are just telling you how good you are and like, what does that even mean? And it just got to come from a certain place and has to be the certain, just put the certain way that, you know, and we're also, we have egos. So we mm -hmm. got to be able to hear it the right way too. So. Well, they had no problem telling me when I was missing too, like when something wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, uh, Jared has a great eye for art. He may not be an artist himself. I mean, he's a photographer. Um, so he does, he has a, and he's an amazing photographer, but he doesn't do, he doesn't paint or anything, but his, his eye for art is amazing. So I take his opinions very seriously. Um, Tommy and Clint 
have zero problem telling me I'm a piece of crap or that I'm <laughs> screwing up in life. And they have zero problem telling me my art sucks too. So I take sure. those to heart. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Um, but uh, with that all going on, we, uh, Jared and I and a girl I was dating at the time and uh, Amber LaFrance, we all came together and we decided to put on a, a, just a huge art show. Like, a, okay, we got this name. And at the time, at this time, I had opened a, a salon in, Dow- in Deep Ellum, the Lash Loft. Mm-hmm. And I had just won a D Magazine award. So it was like my name was out there now. Oh, so, so your first press locally was for the Lash Loft, basically? I'm pretty sure. Wow, interesting. Okay. I'm pretty sure, unless it was something super small, like in the quick or something, maybe before, maybe like a right. mention of the Sugar Shack thing, maybe. Right. Like in the back, of, you know what I'm super <laughs> sure. tiny, you know, event Sugar Shack art show. I don't even say my name. I don't even know. Right. Like that's right. a maybe though. But the first stuff I really got was the was the lash loft. Interesting. Um, and now the lash loft's making money too, right? So I'm able to take that money. Finally, I have money because before we had no money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. It was just a daily hustle of small jobs and trying to keep life together to save money to be able to do something one day. And that was the Lash Loft. And once we did the Lash Loft, I knew that I had to have a business to be able to pursue art professionally because PR is expensive. Art supplies is expensive. Traveling is expensive. Everything that has to do with being a successful artist is expensive. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a coincidence that the one percenters uh, turn out like amazing artists and DJs and stuff like that. It's because they have the money to, yeah. to get their kids in the right position. Yeah. There's a ton of talented artists out there. We're just never going to see them, unfortunately, because it's too expensive to be an artist. Right. Yeah. That's, that's just part of the, the game. It's, 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 it's horrible part of it, but it is definitely part of it yeah. as of right now. You've got to be able to have the time to develop that skill mm-hmm. and not be paying your bills with a day yeah. job basically. Or, it's, yeah. it can get ridiculous. You have to really love it to, to go after it. Yeah. So once we had the last off up and go, we're, we're making money now. We want to, we want to throw this big art show. So, I start calling some friends. I get a DJ buddy of mine to come in um, and we take over lab art and lab art at the time was this huge gallery. It just came to Dallas. They only had one other one. It was in LA and like cause is showing there like, like crazy, like super massive freaking artists are showing. I can't think of names right now. I'm horrible about it, but um, they've got some, some bangers coming out of the, out of this place and they're going to bring it to Dallas and uh, hmm. they had a couple of big, big names come through that did some shows there, but nobody local yet, right? And I was like, I want in. I, I, want, I don't care what we have to do to do this. And the Amber's like, they're not, they're not looking at portfolios. They don't, they don't care. They don't want to see anybody. They're, they're showing the big boys. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was like, well, let's buy it for the night. Take their art down. Put my art up. I'm like, that's... A show, right? She goes, I mean, we could do that. She goes, I'll call up and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> right. And we're all kind of giggling about it. And I'm like, no, let's, I was 100% for real. And they call the owner and the owner's like, what does this guy want to do? He, she, and Amber's like, he wants to buy your place for one day, take down all of your art exhibits, put up all of his art. It had like 50 something pieces, mm-hmm. um, put up all of his art exhibits. And then at the end of the night, take down all of his art exhibits and then put back up all yours. And he's like, are you serious? <laughs> and, and, That's and they're like, yeah, she goes, are, y- are y'all interested in it? And he gave us a number and I was like, sure, we can do that. We huh. can do that. It was a lot. It was a par- chunk of my savings, but I thought that I had a shot at doing something by doing this. So we do the show it was supposed to be me paying for it for one night. Ended up staying up for the entire month without me paying for it. Wow. Yes. They Sold just... quite a few pieces. Nice. <laughs> um, it that got is... a lot of press. Everybody was coming down to check it out. I had uh, been working with, um, and this is before everybody was doing these dips. I had figured out that spray paint on top of water made these crazy patterns and then you could dip things into it and pull off um, hmm. paintings. And that's before everybody was dipping like doing this. Nobody had was doing this. Mm-hmm. All right. And, um, Dallas morning news comes by, they did an article. They're like, so you're making the paint, the painting on the water. Then you're dipping this canvas into it and then pulling out. And nobody had seen this before because nobody was dipping things. This wasn't like a TikTok thing that ever, like everybody does it now. Right. And I was doing that and then going on top of it with like latex paints and all kinds of things and making layers of what looked like very earthy, you know, because I was using rocks on top of the water layers, and, and but there were bright colors, and you saw waves, actual wave and water movement huh. within the paintings. And they looked like they were oil hand-painted, like realistic paintings of water, but they were not. They wow. were made in a couple seconds, you know? Huh. Um, 
And that starts blowing up, and the paintings are they're selling, they're popping. And I'm meeting gallery owners like left and right. Um, so then we're, we're moving art, right? But uh, I have to have a gallery. Everybody's got a gallery, right? You got to have a gallery. Galleries cost a lot of money. And I'm going to be honest with you, they don't seem to sell too much art. Um, they just, it's just not the way it really works. I mean, some of them do, some of them are success, successful that way, but I didn't see that working. Sure. Um, so I decided to go a different route with it. And I took the lash loft model that we had already, which was like a, kind of like a Tiffany's box. It's all, you know, the teals and it's got the, it's got our crystal chandeliers. It's very pretty and elegant in there. And we took that. We're like, you know what? Art galleries are elegant too. Art's elegant. Art's classy. Let's throw the art that I'm making on this wall. And then we had a double boom, more lash loft, more art. And what was happening was, is that my friends that I met through the art and fashion world that loved the art now wanted to come get their lashes done at Deep Elm because they could go back and tell their girlfriends about their cool artist buddy that does Deep Elm art. <laughs> and right. they went and got their lashes done. Oh yeah. Like it was like a thing, where do you get your lashes done, Deep Elm? Mm -hmm. I'm the cool Deep Elm lash girl. <laughs> <laughs> I could totally see that. That is, yeah. So we had we had a lot of that going on, and I loved it. I met a lot of great, great, great clients through that way, man. And it was it was it was interesting, and that that went on for years. That was my that was my game. I was making, you know, um, uh, abstract and surrealism, and just you know playing with different colors of just and those mediums that I told you about for you know, four or five years like that, mm -hmm. or three or four years like that, something like that. Then um, uh, I meet Adrian and uh, my wife now, and uh, we start painting a little bit together, just kind of messing around. And uh, I go up to, or I don't go up to Arco, uh, John LaRue. At this time also, I had kind of like stepped back from doing art like publicly. Like my thing was, is I was going to do art at my salon or at my loft which was next door to the salon and then move it to the salon and people could come see that and buy it but i wasn't mm -hmm. going to go do art with the other galleries and all the other stuff because i kind of saw a different kind of dark side to the dallas art world that i wasn't really excited about i don't like seeing the shows where people are spending thousands of dollars and the same people come every time and all they do is drink and nobody buys art mm -hmm. i've seen it happen to so many people for years and years and years and all mm -hmm. artists have become or a lot of artists have become it's just a party for their friends to come to and drink and eat for free while nobody buys anything and it's still a business for the artist the artist is trying to make money he didn't make you dinner so you can come over here <laughs> you know yeah. it's not it's not he had to pay for the venue or something there there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and i didn't like that so i wasn't going to do it like that anymore i was going to do my own thing and that was it I'm super hard-headed like that. Hmm. <laughs> and John LaRue comes to Deep Ellum, dude. There's always that one crazy guy that kind of changes my life. And it was like, it was, you know, for a while it was uh, Jared Fresquez and, and then it was John, man. Hmm. That, that guy, he came and got me. He, 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 that guy KB I told you about to begin with, um, he was friends with this guy, John, and John was coming to Deep Ellum and he's going to make this thing called Deep Ellum Art Company and watch out. And he is a come in all guns a blazing kind of dude. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. a no joking around. What's up? I'm going to, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. And um, so KB comes over to my loft. He's like, man, there's this guy, John. He's collecting artists. He's going to be doing things different. It's not the way it used to be. You don't have to pay a 50% gallery charge or a 60% gallery charge. You don't have to. He's going to do it for the artist, man. I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard this before. Yeah. You know what I mean? This, yeah. is, this is a new story. Right. Um, and uh, I, was, I was like, dude, I'm good. I got the lash loft. I'm making money. I'm selling art. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm cool. Just do your thing. And he wouldn't let it go. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. then one day, uh, John LaRue and, uh, KB show up at my, uh, at my loft, which is pretty much like a block from Arco. Yeah. Close. It wasn't like a long walk for him. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's like, Hey, I'm John LaRue. I heard you're an artist. I want to talk to you. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. This guy just came over to my loft. All right. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he got my attention. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I was like, you're serious. You, a person who's going to open in a gallery here in Dallas and a club and all this stuff you got going on. You took time out of your day to come over and talk to me about art. All right, what do you got? Mm -hmm. Like that's, I'll respect that every day of the week. Yeah. <laughs> not an very, email, not a phone call. Yeah, hands-on kind of guy. Hands-on. So we sit down and we start talking about what's happened, what what he thinks art is, what he thinks Deep Ellum is, what he thinks Deep Ellum could be and should be, or, you know, a lot of stuff, man. I'll pay, he's paying a lot of homage to a lot of the, the old school dudes here, man. Mm -hmm. And he got to me. He did. He's like, so you, you, you want to come do a, your first mural? I was like, what? 
And I was like, you're, that's, that's how you're going to start off this conversation. Do you want to come do your first mural? He's like, he's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll give you the first spot on the wall. You do whatever you want. I was like, okay, just give me a second. All right. Let me think about this. All right, buddy. And I hadn't done murals. Now at the same time I had done I mean, You see my art, it's huge. Yeah. So I wasn't really too nervous about it, but at the same time I had not done a mural. And I had not had something out in public where if it sucked, everybody could come by and laugh at it all day. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That's what people do. They just gather around. Do they do. In my brain, they're all sitting there <laughs> laughing at the bad ones all day long. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <sighs> Anyways. Um, so he come, he, you, you know, we, I talked to Adrian about it. And I'm like, Adrian, do you want to help me out a little bit? And maybe we could, we could do it together. And, uh, and she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll help you do the, the writing stuff and, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. You know, we'll, we'll, we can do this. It's no big deal. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what do you want to do? I was like, I don't know. I, I kind of want to do like a homage thing. Like, well, this is, I'm a Deep Elm guy. I love this city. He's a Deep Elm guy. The place is called Deep Elm Art Company. Let's throw the real Deep Elm Mafia up on there. Mm-hmm. And we did. I'm sure you've seen it. The, uh, the, the mural that's up there, it's got all the old school dudes from oh, Deep yeah. Elm. The real, the real old school guys, the guys that built the hood. And, um, then stuff starts taking off in a different direction again, of course. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. now you got a mural at this place that's popping off. When it when it's opened up, everybody's like, what is this? And you would go there. I'm sure you read them in the, the beginnings, weren't you? I mean, you, Pretty you close saw, to the beginning, yeah. There were artists from all over Dallas hanging out there for the first year or two all the time. It yeah. was wild. Yeah. I met more artists in those two years of my life than I've ever met. Yeah, I feel like they used to like allow open painting. Oh, yeah. That's how I met Isaac. That's how I learned how to spray paint. Was that yeah. deep? That was the next. That's the next step. So like, I'm there. I'm hanging out. I'm meeting all these artists, and I want to learn how to spray paint. Spray paint. Now, now I had spray painted before, but there's a big difference between like spray painting or like being able to use spray paint as a medium, and then being able to like you know make high definition, super realistic. Yeah, it blows art. my mind still. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> um, and if you want to learn something, in my opinion. You choke your ego up and you ask the best, no matter who the best is. Even if the best is your competition, mm-hmm. you do. You ask the best. And I, I, Isaac Davies and his brother, Detox Davies, they are the best. They were. In my opinion, they were. Especially at that time, they were killers, man. They, they, they were knocking out murals so fast and they were they had been doing, you know, spray paint for 20 plus years. They grew up on a can, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. I don't even think they had bottles. I think they just were given spray paint cans at, at birth and they have another brother too. There, there's three of them and they're all ridiculous, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. robot artists. <laughs> Super talented. Yeah. There is a, so much talent pouring out of that family. It's ridiculous. Um, anyways, I, I, I ask Isaac, I'm like, dude, so like, would you mind like asking a girl for a date, you know, <laughs> like, would you, could you maybe like teach me like how to spray paint? I was like, I could pay you and stuff. He's like, you don't have to pay me. You want to learn how to spray paint? I was like, yeah. I was like, I've never met anybody that can like do what you do. He goes, I've never met anybody that can do what you do. And I still to this point don't know what he was talking about because hmm. he can do everything that I can do. Hmm. <laughs> I think he's just being nice. Yeah. But, um, he goes, he goes, yeah, dude, sure, let's, let's do this. When do you want to practice? I was like, I don't know. I'll go buy a whole bunch of spray paint, and I'll make some boards, and we can come meet you at Arco and have a couple of drinks, and we can learn. And that's how it started, man. Hmm. And then it was like every weekend we would show up, and this is one of the paintings from it, of me learning how to spray paint. We'd build these, or I'd build these during the week. They're made out of wood. And uh, we'd put them up at that Arc, that Arco the out the outdoor right, little the, temple thing they got going on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, huh, that's what we'd call it. Like it. We'd, we'd call it the art church because we'd go in there and we'd start. You go up there and we'd start painting. Everybody come behind and watch us in the pews, man. Oh, it wow. would get crazy there. And God, I miss that. It was those were good times. Those were good couple years. Yeah. And um, that's where I learned. I did not know how to do anything with spray paint until then. So he starts teaching me. And Adrian, who at the time didn't really have an interest to spray paint or do murals. She was doing, you know, her own, her own thing. Um, she was still, uh, doing cookies. Um, Hmm. didn't really want to have anything to do with it quite yet. So he's teaching me how to do it, but she's watching. And uh, it turns out that if Adrian watches anybody do something, she can then immediately do it better than they can. It's super (laughs) annoying. Wow. It's like the most annoying trait to have. Uh, (laughs) Well, for everyone else, for everybody else, pretty cool. Yeah. No, she's got a superpower. Good for her. Um, (laughs) so I spend like the next like three months, um, every day, all day, uh, spray painting. 
Um, John LaRue will tell you, he came to my place and I built a board outside of my patio and I spent every day, wake up in the morning, smoke my cigarette, drink my coffee, spray paint, spray paint, spray paint, spray paint, mm -hmm. until I learned. This is the, every, to get the muscle memory right, the touch right, everything, because it's a, it's crazy. You're mm -hmm. spraying something out of a can that, yeah. ha, that you have no real actual control of and, and the can's pressure changes at all times and the temperature of it makes it change and every, the wind can, ch everything changes. Wow. It's so ridiculous. It you seems... try to control the uncontrollable. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, it seems impossible. I, I did get to like kind of observe one of his classes, spray paint classes, mm -hmm. Isaac, and I'm like, okay, well, I sort of understand the concept. But that's about it. I still don't see how you do that. He's an amazing teacher. I'm going to be honest with you. He is very patient because I am not a very good learner <laughs> when it comes to like <laughs> listening to people. I'm super ADHD and my mind wanders and he took, he has great patience. Yeah. I call him Mr. Miyagi, dude. He is a, he's he is the great and all knowing of when it comes to like spray paint and he knows so many tricks and things that you would never think of. Hmm. Um, but he, and he's still to this day, I, if I have a problem, I run into a, an issue, hit up my boy, Isaac. Hey, what do you, what would you do here? Oh, dude, it's super easy. Just this, 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 and you're hmm. fine. Oh, of course, of course, you know, I learned how to spray paint. I start doing that. Adrian one day walks out on the practice board, of course, and goes, I want to try, I want to play today. And, um, she grabs the spray paint and starts going at it. And guess what? Adrian's really good, mm -hmm. really, really good. Better than the guy that taught me good. Huh. And she never had a class. She just watched us for a couple of hours every week and then watched me on the pet. She didn't even touch the can yet. Jeez. She comes up there and she starts, she's like, oh, okay, I get it. So you just kind of, it's a pressure thing. Okay, fine. And then like an hour later, she's making clouds. A day later, she's made some mountains. Three days later, she's painting people. Wow. And you're like, well, that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's so unfair. And she didn't care that she was good either. That's the funniest part. She has all this talent and all Adrian wants to do is just, you know, she just wants a family and a, yeah. she has all, she has other dreams. Yeah. <laughs> she does the painting for me. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah. No, that's a good partner for sure. <laughs> but I told her, I was like, okay, listen, with you being as good as you are and me having the brain for building these murals and what I know about art with your skills and my brain and my connections and Jared and Amber and all, we've got a team here. We should do something. I was like, you should quit your job and that you've been on for like 15 years. <laughs> and, um, we should just paint murals. We should do them for free. I was like, you should tell your parents that. And she did. And they laughed at us and they thought I was, I mean, that was a pretty horrible pitch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, quit your job. You've been 15 years. Come paint murals, something you've never done. And I've only done one of yeah and we'll we'll change deep elm together <laughs> which it kind of did though it did, it did but let's just be honest like the pitch is hilarious yeah, I mean, like she looked at me like um i don't know about all this i'm like don't worry the lash loft can cover us and that's what that was my that was the main thing i said like, the lash loft will cover us. we've only been dating too much to add like eight months at this time right so she did it though, and, and we plan out everything. We start, I start sketching stuff out, okay? I'm making, and this is back like when I did things old school, so I had huge graph papers, you know what I mean? I'm sitting there drawing these things and I'm measuring up the walls old school, and, and then I gotta find walls. So you gotta have a place to put your art out. So I've been a Deep Ellum kid forever. I know everybody. I run, I run the neighborhood daily. I do miles through it and say high five my buddies that own bars and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, guys, y'all want some free art and I'll get rid of all this you know, graffiti that's all over your wall. And instead you get a free piece of art. Is that cool? And yeah. everybody's like, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. So we start painting, man. And we start knocking out walls. Boom, 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 boom. Um, and we're learning and we're progressing. Every wall we do a little bit different technique, a new technique. We're fi figuring stuff out as we go and getting faster at it. And still, mind you, the first 10 murals, the, all the cartoon murals are still very, very basic within the artistic like ra range. It was more of what, what the, made those murals... Uh, eye-catching and, and fun and iconic to Deep Ellum as a neighborhood now because they've been there for so long. Everybody knows about them is, is what they are about. It's the cartoon mm -hmm. and, and the nostalgia movie and, you know, like the Mario Brothers Day Off. I, yeah. st I still get a kick out. I mean, I made it and I still get a kick yeah, out of it. Yeah, it's kitschy, but it's just, <laughs> they're kind of like perfect in what they are and it fits the mood of the neighborhood mm -hmm. so well. It's, yeah, no, it's I great. mean, if Mario, like, was Ferris Bueller, don't you think he would have come to Deep Ellum? Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> it works sure. in my messed up brain Wait, in the world that I live in. <laughs> so, like, give me a frame of reference. Like, what years were you like starting the murals? Uh, 2000. It's it was five years ago, two days ago. Oh wow! Because it came up on Facebook, and nice. Adrian goes, "It's only been five years." Wow. 
I was like, it has. It's only been five years. I thought we were doing murals longer than that. She's like, well, we've only been together six and a half, almost seven. So, I mean, yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it was five years ago. Just a couple days ago, we painted our first one, which is that one right there. It's on the back of um, my old loft in the Deep Ellum. And that's that. That's actually the original. What started us working together was this piece we did in the... What's it called? This one. This one doesn't really have a name. It's just our... It's just, just our when monopoly. We, when we point it. A painting oh, yeah. Podcast. yeah, you guys aren't here. <laughs> That's y'all's fault. You should come over. Yeah, I know. It's almost big <laughs> enough for all our listeners. I don't know. We just started. Um, this is yet. the um, Scrooge McDuck and Monopoly Man um, Pulp Fiction mm-hmm. remake that we did using, you know, the real Monopoly money and real, you know, $100 bills on it using the techniques and spray paint that Isaac taught me in, on the background. And then Adrian and this one, this one was hand painted, but Adrian and I did, did this together. And then we decided this would be our first one. We turn into a mural. So that's why this one just says panic on it. Mm-hmm. If you don't notice on the bottom, it doesn't say house of panic because house of panic wasn't there yet. We, I was just doing, I was just painting. I had this cool idea. And then she started working with me on the paintings outside. And then she's and then we, that's, it all just comes together, you know? And that's if you notice all these pieces in the house, they come with a, they're big, pieces to me they mm-hmm. may not be the best pieces i've ever done but they they're parts where my life changed and that's why i keep the the pieces that i keep those are the reasons why i keep them i see Interesting. so like isaac and my first piece together when i learned how to spray paint the piece that we did that turned into the house of panic this piece over here was my first time to use graffiti there's a lot of things that are just firsts mm-hmm. yeah. um yeah and those are the ones that mean a lot to me but we start doing those Isaac's helping us out on the way, kind of like here, like, you know, I'll come by for, he came by for a day and help us out with some like lightning part we couldn't figure out and stuff like that. And we're, and we're learning, right? Mm-hmm. Then we get to the, and the press at that point is going nuts because right. nobody had And this done is when this. House of Panic begins. That's when House of Panic becomes House of Panic. Okay. Um, uh, then we're doing interviews. We're getting news every day. Somebody's down there from somewhere because we're doing all these murals and it's taken months to do them. So they're coming down there and interviewing us and stuff's starting to go pretty cool, right? Um, then we get to the, what we want to do is the last one. And that's the, the veterans mural, the crazy thing that happened. Uh, oh, right. so Isaac comes back. It's going to be me, Isaac and Adrian now. And we're bringing in our buddy who's a photographer, um, uh, Jeremy Locke. And, um, we bring in Jeremy and we're like, we're going to do this mural together. We're going to use his photography, which is a photo that he took that was in national geographics. It was a, and he's a huge photographer. Um, and, we're taking his image. We're going to put it on the side of the green room. And at the time, um, he was in the TV show, The Real Housewives of Dallas. Hmm. Um, his wife is Leanne uh, Locken, uh, in there. Um, sorry, DeAndre Simmons. <laughs> and um, uh, they were going to use their show to promote the art. So now it's getting big, big. Now we're going on national TV. Now we're, you know what I mean? Yeah, wow. And we're painting and we're doing this mural and we're being filmed for The Real Housewives and we get this thing and knocked it out and it's huge. It goes everywhere. Everybody's seeing this mural all over the place. And then like, what was it? Two months later, three months later on the 4th of July, the, the company, um, West Hill properties comes by and paints it black on 4th of July. Yeah, man. <laughs> that was a crazy day. That was a crazy day. Cause we did that mural for free. You know, that was another one that I gave away Right at this point. I've given well over probably 20 murals to depot that I have not been paid for. We've just given them. Sure. Um, and, uh, they painted that over, destroyed it. And, uh, I tried to talk to them. I tried to be nice about it. And they pretty much told me, you know, F you kid, what are you going to do about it? That was just never a good way to approach me. Mm. <sighs> no, <laughs> I like competition and I feel like you just challenged me to like a, a football game. <laughs> you know and right. if you want to play a game we could play a game i like games let's play it so we did <laughs> and yeah. it did not turn out so well for the other side we took that thing national and you know we didn't get the mural back like we wanted to but to be honest with you it kind of ruined the mural anyways mm. and isaac and i have always agreed that we don't like repainting the same thing we're here to paint new stuff sure so we're not really we we, we were trying to come up with a way to do it again and it just the situation just couldn't work out the same. And mm-hmm. we didn't want the mural to be a revenge piece either. We wanted it to be about the Marines that were on the mural and that the Marines had kind of lost their part in the entire art you know, project due to the drama and that wasn't okay. We didn't want that. Mm-hmm. So we just decided to, to let that one go. But all the PR from that, now our name's everywhere. Mm-hmm. So from that, then we build, start building you know, a, pretty, a pretty crazy art career. 
Um, I mean, it's a, yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys are <laughs> everywhere. I know it's fun because I mean, I'm not that new. I mean, I'm sort of new to Dallas. So you were doing that. I was just starting to figure out what was going on about that same time. So it's, but to me, it's like you guys have been doing this for a while. So it's interesting to get the, the time frame. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about like your opinion of the Dallas art scene. Like start with like how you're involved. And then if you want to, you know, you can be positive or negative. It's mm-hmm. fine. Um, my involvement in the Dallas art scene is um, a little bit different than most probably. I do not do a lot of the Dallas art stuff with the other artists. I don't do the collectives with the other artists, and it's because I don't believe that they pay the way that they should. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand why the other artists do them. Um, I would rather do free art before I get paid crap to do art. Mm-hmm. That's, a dist- that's a respect thing for me. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So uh, that's why I don't play in that realm. I don't do the art shows a lot. I'm not really big on that either. I just don't see uh, art's a business, man. I'm here to get the the most out of it, and I'm here to get my art out to the most amount of people, also. And putting your art in a gallery so somebody can come buy it and put it in their house isn't it? Mm-hmm. Not for me, at least. Um, so what I do, I, 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 how do you explain it? I'm more of a like the cow kind of thing. I'm more of a make an experience. Mm -hmm. I put it out there. It's free usually, unless somebody comes by like Modelo or a big company or, you know, uh, that wants me to do a mural inside their place. We'll do those too. And that's, we do decent money doing that. But the, the, where I am an artist in my opinion now, is just the fun part of it, making the crazy stuff, bringing it to events. Like we're taking the cow to lights all night now. Mui Vuitton, by the way. Mui Vuitton. Sorry. (laughs) My bad. Um, Mui for short, no? <laughs> we got another crazy mural coming out in a week or two here in Deep Ellum at um, St. Pete's. We'll do that oh, one cool. um, for a Dallas Mavericks kind of thing we're going to do there. But I, I shy away from the group ones where they do like the Blues Alley kind of thing that they do and the other stuff. Not that I don't like it. Blues Alley is gorgeous. I'm sure you've seen it. it turned out amazing. They're, they got a lot of great artists to do it too. Mm-hmm. It's just not my particular scene. Um I don't like half being told also to work within a certain medium. Like, hey, can you come do this all blue face or this all blue thing towards this toward a, towards this like you know specific uh, interest? I would like more to be able to just express kind of like what I what I want to do as an artist. Um, like the cow. One day I thought it'd be cool to make one, and then I made it. <laughs> right. That's what it is to be an artist for me right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, I was gonna try to ask about you know how Dallas can improve for the art world. I mean, actually you could have an opinion on that, but it sounds like you're not operating in the same circles as the art world. So it's sort of an interesting. No, I know all of them and we're friends and we hang out. I see a Jabbar, I say hi. I talk to Isaac. I talk to, you know, uh, Detox. I talked to Jeff, just talked to Jeff Thornton this morning. Talked to Frank Capagna. I talked to what I consider the, the real hardcore deep LM artists for sure. Mm -hmm. I stay in touch with those guys. Um, there's a couple artists that I do like that are coming up that I, that I follow a little bit, but uh, I'm not, I definitely don't do the, like I said, the big collectives and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I don't go along with the, we're all going to go together and paint this shopping center and <laughs> right. I'm sure you've seen those pop up. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, let me ask you this. I feel like I've been at a lot of shows mm-hmm. where I'm in the photo pit and then you're standing like right next to me. You're like, mm-hmm. you're friends with a lot of DJs. Like, what is that connection? So, um... It, that's Don Nedler, man, and that's uh, that's Mike Zemer. That's my boy, and uh, that's a hundred percent Anna Marie Cavett. I mean, uh, to I guess Zemer now because they're buried. Now, she's got a long name. <laughs> <laughs> Very long. Very long. Um, uh, they all brought me into that music scene. So, like I said, there's always that next person that mm-hmm. takes you to that next level because it takes an army to get you somewhere. It really does. I don't know anybody that's just doing it by themselves. Yeah, um, that's true. So, Don let me paint the DJs. Let Adrian and I paint the DJs that would come to Lizard Lounge because at this time, I am a like 10 year veteran or 15 year veteran at that point in my life of everyday lizard lounging. Mm. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I had my own table. Uh, I walked in the door and those dudes loved me and I would go upstairs and sit and watch every show. I can't tell you how many shows I've seen. It's, wow. it's stupid. Um, cool. And that was my thing for a while. Like that was my get out. People go to see shows in Deep Ellum. I didn't go to, I mean, I've seen some of the trees. I've been to Bonfire. I've been to all the places, mm. but my mainstay was lizard lounge. dude. Mm-hmm. God, I loved it. And, um, so I had this idea. I was like, man, do you, would you mind if I like, painted a DJ and then we'll put it up in the green room, which was actually painted pink. I don't know if you knew that. Mm. The pink green room. 
<laughs> um, and um, he's like, well, like, we'll put it up there. And then when the artists get here, they go into the green room and they're like, oh, shit, there's this. What is this? And then if they want to meet us, we can meet them. That was the first original plan, right? Mm. Well, the first original plan went pretty good. BT, I don't know if you know who that is. Um, big, big, big uh, DJ, especially from like... Uh, if you, if you look up his music, you'll remember a lot of his music from like Gone in 60 Seconds and Fast and Furious. He was like oh. a DJ that was like doing stuff with movies and stuff back in the day. Wow. Okay. Um, anyways, so um, we get to meet him. He loves the painting, right? That was the the first one. But it was it didn't go like crazy, crazy big. It was like, oh, cool painting. Hi, how you doing? We got pictures and that was it. But he did seem excited about it. And Don wanted to try it again. And he's like, oh, who do you want to do next? And the next one was big. I was like, uh, can we do Paul Oakenfold? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yeah, that's my... And, and of course, Don's friends with him because uh -huh. he's owned the lizard forever. And he's like, yeah, done. done. You know what? Paul would love that because it turns out Paul's like a huge art guy, like uh -huh. a big art collector, okay? And the whole Paul Oakenfold story is actually a little crazy because that night before we met him, Adrian and I got engaged. Um, so we get engaged, mm. we drop the painting off, we, Paul gets there, he sees the painting, he freaks out, like, every, like there's a video of it I got somewhere, he's like freaking out, he loves it, he's talking in his British accent, which you gotta love, and uh, he tells everybody, get them up here, get, the, get them up here right now, <laughs> so we, we run up there, and uh, he's got, he's like, oh, you guys are fucking amazing, all this stuff, he's like, you guys did this, come here, come here right now he's like giving us hugs and we're taking pictures and uh he's and somebody had said they just got engaged a couple hours ago he goes what <laughs> what are y'all doing without champagne he's like yelling the whole time and uh all of a sudden there's like bottles of champagne all around the room oh, wow. and paul okafold is like toasting us for getting engaged wow, surreal and that was <sighs> wow. like <laughs> i'm like where am i right now you know <laughs> That is one of the coolest that like for me for photography, same with you. It's like where your art takes you is like so unpredictable and amazing mm -hmm. a lot of the time if you're doing it, you know. Well, that one went so well. Like yeah. Paul was so amazed by it that he actually wanted his painting. Mm -hmm. So we sent it to him. It's now in his house. Um, nice. So that one went to, because that went so well. Now Don's like, all right, we'll do what you want. Like doors open, buddy. It's mm -hmm. on you now. I'm not even going to ask talk to Clint, you and Clint arrange how you drop it off. Clint's my, one of my best friends in the whole world. He used to run the door and everything at the Lizard Lounge forever, mm -hmm. like 20 something years. Um, and uh, so Clint and I got together, we plan out how to, where to put them, what DJs were the best ones, what DJs we thought would, would enjoy the art too. We also didn't want to give it to people that we weren't going to care. Or we didn't think would even be there for long enough. We were trying to get, you know, the art, the art, the DJ to see it and appreciate it and want it, you know? So we started knocking out some big names. As you can see, we kept a couple on the wall. But man, I mean, we did Riff Raff. We did um, Martin Garrix, Armin Van Buren, Steve Aoki. <laughs> nice. um, those are, I mean, their list goes on. There was a, it was, it was a, a fun four months, and then COVID. Uh, uh. Closed the lizard. Yeah. Killed the dream there. Mm. Killed my home. Killed all the art dreams. No more DJs. And we, everything goes back for two years. We almost lose the lash loft. We almost lose the mm. art business. We're not making murals. I'm not painting. I'll tell you that right now. I'm mm -hmm. not doing much of anything. I'm so depressed. Sure. Um, and then as COVID came back, we hit up our, our, our friends, Anna Marie and, um, uh, you know, Mike Zemer. And I'm like, yo, we need to, I need to get back in this, you know? And I actually hired Mike as a, as a manager, for our art and he helped us out a little bit trying to get us back in the door get us back into the scene again right as mm -hmm. covid was you know clearing up or starting to clear up and um anna marie's like you guys want to do some painting at like live at the shows how about that like at the at the festivals and i was like do you want to do you want to do that babe and she's like sure let's do that so we, we grab our boy alfonso and um, I love Alfonso. Yeah, we grab Alfonso, dude, the crazy mad art scientist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good description. <laughs> it, that, that is Alfonso, and we take him with us, dude. And he had been painting with us for a minute too. At this point, he had been kind of training with us, kind of like how we had trained with Isaac, you know. Mm -hmm. So he comes up with us, and we go out to Ubby Dubby, and we crush it, man. We do a huge mural in two days. Um, Disco Donnie loves it, and wants to do other stuff. And then from there, we start building back 
into the scene, start doing the, we do the murals for uh, Sports Illustrated, the Maverick murals that blew up. And then we come back and do the, oh wait, no, we'd already done those other ones, but we came back and did the Mavericks ones. We started building the art stuff back up. And then we did, you know, Mewis. Right. And we're back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, then it's we're, a game of up and downs here in the art world. Yeah, we're we're kind of getting, getting to the end, but I, I feel like we need to just bring up. So you get this Modelo deal mm-hmm. where you're doing these art shoes, mm-hmm. but then you get uh, two, hurt. two hernias, two right? Two hernias. Not yeah. one. We got to go for two. Yeah. <laughs> so let's quickly like. So what happens is I'm. You know, I'm, uh, I was busy. I was doing sculptures and painting cars and doing all this stuff. I was doing so much stuff. We had just got this house. I'm getting ready for the wedding, and I'm trying to get that stuff going, and I'm doing too much, man. I really am. And uh, I go to, we get married, and the next day I go to move this, uh, this sculpture at my buddy's place. Um, I can't think of the freaking name right now. Um, uh, Stroker's. That's what it is, Stroker's Bar. Um, I'm going to move this sculpture over there, and I feel like something just happened that was wrong, but I wasn't sure Uh. if something... I didn't know what had happened. I just was moving the sculpture. I was like, something's wrong. And I was in pain, but I didn't know what was going on. I just needed to get out of the area that I was in. So I was like, I got to (laughs) go. So I I just left. I grabbed my wife, and we left. Left the sculpture the way it was. It just That was the end of this situation. Uh, I had to leave. uh. We get home, and I'm like, "I, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't feel good. I was nauseous. And I'm trying to go through the day. And then we had to, this meeting with a new property about trying to open another lash loft. And Jared was there. And we're up in the ceiling. And I start feeling sick again. And I'm like, something's wrong with me, man. I got this pain coming out of this area. And I feel like, I feel like I'm going to throw up. But I don't feel sick. I just feel nauseous, mm. which I never had that problem. So I was like, I got to go. So we leave there. I come back home. And then all of a sudden, I notice like my legs. Something's rubbing against my leg weird. And I go to take a shower. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. Yeah. And I obviously have a hernia, obviously. I mean, and so we go to the doctor the next day and they're like, okay, yeah, we need to get this fixed. You know what I mean? (laughs) You could die from this. If this stays out, something could get clogged. It needs to be inside of your body, not outside of your body. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the recovery time? Like, what do we got to do here? Because I had to start making Modelo shoes, 13 pairs in like three and a half weeks, something like that. Mm. I had no designs yet. The, the, the project just got dropped on me like four days beforehand. Oh, okay. This wasn't a planned project. You know what I mean? They're like, we need these 13 shoes. You have this many days. Good luck. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, hell, the shoes weren't even here yet. They were, like, we're still waiting on the delivery of the shoes. Um, and uh, so I was like, what, what's the recovery time? Like, what do we got to do it? They're like, I mean, it'll be a couple weeks, buddy. You're mm. going to be at least out a full week of not being able to do much. You're going to be in some pain. And I don't take pain medicines. Um, I used to be an addict of a lot of stuff, so I stay away from the mm. stuff like that. Um, so I had to go through this with no pain medicine, no anything. Um, and I was like, well, I, I, I can't cop. I can't like stop the Modelo thing. I've worked my whole life to get stuff like this. Yeah. So I was like, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to deal with this. I literally pushed the hernia back into my own body. <laughs> And strapped on this belt thing. It's freaking hilarious looking. It's super embarrassing. It's like a male diaper. Uh, <laughs> Stuck that on myself. And for three weeks, I, I mean, you saw me, dude. I yeah. was humbled quite a bit and hobbling around the house. And while doing that, I gave myself another hernia. Uh, <laughs> that one was up here. Damn. So... I just deal with the situation. Luckily, this one didn't break through the the muscle all the way. It was only, it's like halfway through. So that's when it cuts through like part of your muscle mm. tissue or whatever. And it pops out just a little bit, makes a little bit of a bump right here. But it didn't go through all the way. So what we did was I pretty much ace bandaged myself up. <laughs> I'm so ridiculous. And so where it wasn't like pushing. And then when we went to go get the surgery, we were actually expecting them to go in and fix this. But due to the fact that I had been laying down for three weeks from the from being injured and painting. I was just painting shoes, you know? And then it took three weeks to get me into the surgery. So during those six weeks of sitting around the house, um, the top one, the muscle had repaired itself and, huh. it, and they, they said it was fine to the point to where they didn't want to go over here and mess with it. Yeah. They don't, they're like, we don't need to do that. It looks like it's good. It's healed. If it does break, we will go back and chain and, and we'll put a patch over it. But right now going in that part of area of your body, when we're already going down here, and I don't know if you know this, but I already did this to six inches 12 years ago 
on this side. On the other so side. So now I'm just a big patch. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, <coughs> man. But I just, you know, did what you got to do, man, and uh, yeah, did no. that and the shows. You know, did did a show, a shoe show. Oh, with you, a cane, <laughs> you know, geez, painting art know live. Wow, and then, that is hardcore, man. That is that <laughs> is for a good story. Yeah, a great story. <laughs> um, what? So, what's next for House of Panic for you? It's about to get big. Yeah, bigger. It's about to get bigger. It is about to get bigger. I just got off the phone, as I told you, when you walked in the door, with Modelo and Attribute. Attribute is this amazing, huge company that um, they're like what do you call it like death row records but like for visual artists mm. how about that cool. wow that's yeah they uh they got some big names under their belt let's just say that when it comes to murals and uh you sign with them you do art like it's that it's that other level uh -huh. it's not dallas famous no more it's yeah. that it's that world oh. they take it to the to the next level i got you at the last possible moment where you're still just dallas famous <laughs> yeah god i hope so we'll see yeah. it, it is what it is i don't think the fame is really a big part of me i love doing this stuff dude yeah i love it i love painting i love going outside i love people calling me with their kids dude we saw your mural and we went to high school with you and my kid loves it that's what it's about yeah that's fun for that's, me sure absolutely but uh next is uh it's more modello stuff to start um i will be going on tour with them again this year um, I'm going to be bringing on some artists. I can't name the artists yet. Uh, I will tell you that I only bring in the guys that I grew up with, obviously. So mm -hmm. I'm going to bring, bring in them. I've got some new buddies that I've met since I've moved to Forest Hills that I'm going to try to bring in too. But right now we're going to focus on you know the guys that, that put me up and bringing them on with uh, Modelo to go on tour this year also. Um, so a whole bunch of just Modelo stuff in general, but mm -hmm. definitely a tour. I'm also going to be designing some clothing, more clothing for them. Oh, cool. I'm excited about that. Um, and then right off the bat, in two weeks, Mouis Vuitton is going to head down to Lights All Night. She's got her own little stage, I guess you could call it. They got her up on some uh, risers. And uh, you can go there and meet Mouis just like you meet Sandy. Santa. <laughs> can't sit on her. You can't get on her lap. She's not going to give you any presents. No, it's but so she cool. she can still go hang out, with, hang out at the rave and kick it with Mouis. And uh, I'm going to go hang out with some awesome DJs for the weekend. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, see some amazing, amazing music, meet some amazing people. And, and that's pretty much how you get to that as an artist. That's how you do it. You know, yeah. you get to that next step. And you know, some artists, some people could take this as like, Oh, free weekend of rave. You know, I got a, I got a, the, that God pass that you uh -huh. go wherever you want to go, you sure. know? And most people will be like, I'm going to go party and live it up this weekend. Not for me. That, that weekend's about the art, meeting new people, making more connections to try to get to that, you know, that next level again. Mm -hmm. Cause there's more places to go within, uh, the art realm with music festivals. And I definitely want to keep that relationship going also with my Modelo relationship. It works perfect. The music yeah. and that. Yeah. Well, I'll see you at <clears throat> night one of lights all night. Yeah. Day. It'll be fun, but I, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> tell us where we can find stuff. If you want people to find you online, um, you can find, uh, me on Instagram at the house of panic. Um, you can find me on my Facebook is honestly like the best place to go. Preston panic. Um, we do have a website out the, uh, house of panic.com. Um, that's if you're looking to get in touch with us. Uh, if you're looking for the art, just go to deep Ellen, man. Yeah. Just walk around, take a little walk, get a drink, get some food, find some friends. And, uh, I'm sure you will find some of our pieces down there. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Some gorgeous and really in innovative type stuff. So thanks again, Preston for talking to me and, uh, yeah. See you around. All right. Thanks for having me, buddy. I'd like to thank my guest, Preston Panic, for joining us today. You can check out his work at houseofpanic.com. Theme song, Unstoppable by Salim Narala. You can check us out every week on Deep Ellum Radio and then again on all the podcast platforms. Dallas Famous Podcast. This is Andrew Sherman. Thanks again. <laughs>